My name is Vince Farrell and I'm an Applications Engineer at Hawkridge Systems. Today I'm going to go over DIM Expert, which is available in all levels of SOLIDWORKS. That means SOLIDWORKS Standard, Professional, and Premium. This will be in the first video in a series about Tall Analysts, which is available in SOLIDWORKS Premium as an add-in. To start with, let me give you a summary of what Tall Analyst does. This is an add-in that will take into account all of the tolerances in your assembly and create a tolerance stack-up analysis. Once you have your analysis results, you can modify the individual dimension tolerances so that the parts always fit together. Pretty useful, right? I know I've been called over by my boss after parts coming back from being manufactured per print and hearing it doesn't fit. Needless to say, this isn't fun. The reason that I want to start with DIM Expert in this series is because Tall Analyst uses the data from DIM Expert to complete its tolerance stackup. You can use DIM Expert to either add dimensions manually or automatically based on the type of part. I'm going to use DIM Expert and Tall Analyst on this sheeter assembly. So you can see here that we have a sheeter assembly that's got cutting this sheet here. So we have two knives moving up and down. If I open up this individual assembly right here, you can see that a little better. Two knives moving up and down. As a designer, I don't want the blades to be too close together because they'll crash, and I don't want them to be too far apart because then they won't cut. Therefore, I'm going to use Tall, tall Analyst to make sure that the tolerance stackup doesn't cause either of these two scenarios. The first thing I need to do, though, is to make sure Dim Expert has been applied to all my parts. I'm going to use this upper knife block to actually apply Dim Expert, but to show you how Dim Expert works, I'm going to use a simple part and you can get a feel of it. So if I switch over here, I just have a simple block here with two of the same size holes and I'm going to go to the Dim Expert tab which is right here next to my feature manager tree and you can see here that we have a couple of different options. We can either auto dimension the this part using the auto dimension scheme or if we had a, another scheme in a different configuration we could copy that over. I'm just going to click on auto dimension scheme and I get some options here. So first I have to choose the part type. Is it prismatic or turn? This is a prismatic part and then I choose my tolerance type plus and minus or GD and T. I'm going to use GD and T for this part because that's what we're going to be using on the sheeter and I'm going to pick my datum. So I start with a primary, click on a secondary, and then click on a tertiary. Now, under my scope, I can choose all the features or just some selected features. And further down from that, I can tell it all, or excuse me, Dim Expert, do I want to use plane, surface, cone, different types of features. I'm just going to hit the green check here and let it run the Dim Expert scheme. And you can see here, it added all of those dimensions pretty well here. We got some standard tolerances here, uh, plus or minus 20 thou. If I want to change that, I can always go to my options, go to my document properties, and go to the DIM expert area, and then I can change all of the different tolerance dimensions and parameters. Okay, I can also change how those dimensions display. Now that I've created all my DIM expert um, features here, I can also create a drawing from that. Before I move on to the drawing though, I want to point out that DIM expert in this case, because these two holes are the same size, it added a two times callout. If it doesn't happen to do that, you can just control select both of the dimensions and right click and say combine dimension and it will combine them into a two times callout. Let's make a drawing from this part. So I'm just going to say make drawing from part or assembly and I get my view palette over here. Now I can see here any of these views with an A next to them, that means they have annotations in it. So if I, before I drag one over, I make sure I have my options here is import annotations and dim expert annotations and I can just drag it over and SOLIDWORKS will automatically add in those dim expert annotations. Now if I drag in another part and I don't have the import on, let's just drag in a front view. Let's place that, place it down and drag it up over here. If I forgot to bring in those DIM expert annotations, I can just say import annotation, DIM expert annotations and it'll turn it on. 
If I go back to my view palette though, if it doesn't have an A in front of it, there aren't any dim expert annotations to bring into your part. So even if you turn that on, or excuse me, your drawing, even if you turn that on, it's not going to bring in any of those dimensions. So we finished with that simple part. Let's go back to this upper knife block. So if I go again to my dim expert manager, I can see there's no scheme applied here. So I'm gonna do an auto dimension scheme. Again, this is a prismatic part, G, D, and T. So we're just gonna pick our three datums, primary, secondary, and tertiary. I'm gonna let dim expert auto dimension everything. So that looks pretty good for the most part. But if I look at these two holes here, I can see I actually want this to be a press fit for a bushing. So if I go to the actual dimension, I can change my tolerance precision right here instead of bilateral to fit with tolerance. And then I can change this to a P7 press fit hit the green check and it automatically adds in the tolerance for that press fit. That's it for today's video. So today we covered the first part of setting up a tall analyst study, which is to use DIM Expert on all your parts. Thanks a lot for watching. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to actually set up your tall analyst study. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.